Um, thank you for joining me today. I'm Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, and uh, my office is involved in a, a variety of issues. I'm very proud of the work our uh, 30 bureaus and 15 offices do day in, day out. I want to speak about a couple of issues that are of particular importance, in particular importance really uh, nationally, that we've taken uh, extremely important action on uh, in the very uh, in very recent past, really in the last few days. The first thing I want to talk about is keeping dangerous guns off our street. I think many of you watched the struggle in Congress last night uh, as they just tried to get to the floor for a vote, uh, legislation that uh, we've already dealt with in New York. And I think it's very important in a time where there is tremendous national anguish about our inability to deal with the epidemic of gun violence we face and particularly with the problems posed by a lack of background checks and the legality of assault weapons that really have no places on the streets of America and cities. It's important to understand that in New York we have shown national leadership on this. We closed the gun show loophole. I have model AG procedures in effect in every gun show in New York State. You can't get out of a New York gun show with a gun you didn't bring in without getting a background check. And we passed uh, a comprehensive gun control law in 2013, the SAFE Act, and to this week, uh, we're following a uh, two-year investigation, my office and our colleagues in the New York State Police arrested three men for illegally selling more than 100 assault weapons in violation of the SAFE Act. Uh, they were selling them in Rochester and Henrietta. This is the largest bust of assault weapons since the SAFE Act was passed. Uh, Cordell Jackson and two of his employees are each facing multiple felony charges as a result of this, including criminal sale of a firearm in the first degree, all of them face up to 25 years in prison. And I would note that the um, uh, one of these guns, the ARF 5.56 here in the front, is essentially identical to the gun used by the shooter in Orlando. These are guns that do not belong on our streets. These are guns that do not belong in the hands of anyone with a criminal history or mental health issues. And I'm very proud of the fact that in New York, we have taken steps that other states haven't to address this. It is essential that Congress rise to the occasion. I'm pleased that at least there was some effort to agitate uh, on the floor of the House last night. And I hope that uh, we are going to finally respond to the millions of Americans asking why we can't do anything about the violence and the epidemic of shootings. So uh, that's something that... Uh, I'm pleased about it. I'm also pleased that this week the Supreme Court uh, made a decision to uh, reject challenges to the SAFE Act and similar assault weapons bans. So we, we move forward slowly, but in New York we have shown leadership on this, and I'm very proud of the work that our Organized Crime Task Force, our investigators, and our colleagues in the state police did on this. Second thing I want to talk about, and this is at the very end of the legislative session, we finally passed a bill that, as many of you know, I've been advocating for for some years to do something about zombie properties. A huge problem across the state, but a very big problem in this area in particular. Um, as you know, uh, starting in 2012, I became the national co-chair of a working group to go after the banks that destroyed the housing market and collect money and try and get it back to the communities that were hurt by the crash. So far, our working group has recovered over $95 billion, and New York State has received over $5.3 billion of that. Some of it comes in the form of cash that goes into the general fund. But some of it has been used to fund land banks. We have 16 land banks across the state. The Buffalo uh, Erie Niagara Land Bank has uh, received uh, $4.5 million already. And the money for land banks really just started flowing at the end of 2013. And um, they've reclaimed properties all across Erie and Niagara counties. Uh, they've, they've demolished more than 100 properties and acquired dozens of others to rehab and resell. And it's uh, uh, tremendously important. We've been trying to do what we can do to help with the revival in um, Erie County and in Niagara County. We also are very proud of the work we did in uh, the nuisance proceeding against Central Park Plaza. But land banks could not buy zombie properties. This is this category of properties that frustrated local officials, frustrated our land banks all across the state. Because a zombie is a house where the bank is begun foreclosure, the family is left, and there was no requirement up until this law was passed that the bank maintain the property, that there would be a registry so the local government could tell who actually owned it, because often mortgages would be sold and it, it wasn't made public. So the bill that legislation that was passed is going to be a huge boost 
to the land bank here and to our other 15 land banks and to communities all across the state. It is tremendously important that we understand that we are still digging our way out of the crash. And uh, the work that we've done with the funds recovered from the banks has produced tr tremendous results. We have uh, funded, we're funding 90 legal counseling and housing service agencies. Tens of thousands of New York families are in their home uh, who would not be there otherwise because they wouldn't have had a lawyer or a housing counselor to guide them through the foreclosure process. If you are eligible for a mortgage modification in New York, you can go on our website and find the people in our homeowner protection program or HOP program and get help. And we even have gotten money in our last settlement, which was the Goldman Sachs, injected a huge, another $100 million into this fund uh, to provide small loans for folks who almost qualify for a modification but have some pre-existing debt that prevents them from getting a modification of their mortgage to write it down so they can stay in their home. We are committed to keeping people in their homes, foreclosures, evictions, anything that th throws families out of their homes. Kids get pulled out of school, people lose their jobs. It breaks the fabric of the society. Zombie properties, these vacant abandoned properties that have been havens for arson, for crime, uh, that have brought down pop property values all over the state. We can finally do something about it. And I really wanna commend um, the sponsors of the bill, uh, uh, Senator Klein's Assembly Member Weinstein, local Assembly Member Kearns, others were very active here in this effort, and it's uh, it's going to make a big difference in our communities. We've already done a lot towards the revival of this era, as part of our state, which is very important to me, and I think this is a step that ha will have local government officials all across the state standing up and cheering. It's that important. So. Um, it's important in a time where there's a lot of turmoil at the national level and there's a lot of national frustration and people are frustrated with our politics and with uh, their economic prospects and with uh, the breakdown in the American compact that we, each generation leaves us, the country a little safer, a little more equitable, a little more just than the last generation. People are frustrated since we have lost our way in New York. On these and other issues, we have shown tremendous leadership. I'm very proud of it. and. Uh, we don't know how many lives were saved by getting these guns off the streets, but we know that we will do everything that we possibly can in my office, working with our colleagues in government to ensure that nothing like Orlando ever happens in the state of New York. And with that, Matt, we'll take, take questions. Well, well, we entered into a settlement with uh, DraftKings and FanDuel uh, that actually led to this path towards legislation. So the the the, uh, the settlement uh, uh, set up a situation in which, if we could pass legislation by the end of June, change the law by the end of June, then we would not pursue the litigation further because this would resolve it. It's now legal. We did not waive our rights to pursue false advertising claims or deceptive practices, but the sports, the daily fantasy sports are going to be legal, they're going to be regulated, they're going to be taxed. That's what I've been calling for all along. And the settlement we reached, I think, uh, not, it was not only consistent with this legislation, but it really provided some um, incentive for them to get it done and get it done quickly. So I'm very pleased with the fact that, that the legislation has been passed and look forward to uh, enforcing the laws and regulations. Uh, I can't really comment on the ongoing investigation. Um, it's it's a, a broad investigation, and there have been a lot of reports, so some of them accurate, some of them not, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to comment on it at this time. Can you comment on the investigation involving uh, Steve Kidman? No. Uh, can you talk at all uh, about what went into this uh, arrest and the seizure of the assault? Absolutely. The... the uh, uh, our colleagues in the federal government, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, noticed some paperwork irregularities in this gun store. And it became clear that uh, this gun store operator and his employees understood the SAFE Act very well and understood what was prohibited and what was not prohibited, but continued to sell these weapons in violation of the SAFE Act with full knowledge they were doing so. And it was the most flagrant disregard for the SAFE Act that we've seen. 
the overwhelming majority of New York gun stores, gun sellers, uh, people who work, uh, sell guns at gun shows are honorable people who obey the law and follow the law. This is a rogue gun store that is a total outlier from other gun stores in, in the state of New York, flagrant disregard of the law. And we have witnesses uh, that made it clear that the, the these people feigned ignorance. They said, well, it's con we're confused by the SAFE Act, but then witnesses were able to report that they knew in great detail what the SAFE Act required, what features of guns had to be changed before they could be sold. So this was a really uh, a particularly egregious example of a violation, not like anything we've seen in any other gun store in the state. Yes. At that point, uh, Mr. Jackson's attorney has been quoted as saying that um, the SAFE Act is too vague. It's too vague to be enforceable. Any comments on that? Uh, it wasn't too vague for us to enforce it, and we, you know, as we will, when we go forward with this proceeding, uh, I think it will become evident that Mr. Jackson, while claiming it was too vague, uh, told a lot of people in great detail exactly how the Safe Act worked and what could be sold and what couldn't be sold. These guys understood exactly what they were doing. What would um, your advice be for Congress to consider and take back Well, our advice is, yeah, is please learn from our learn from the lessons here. Learn from the lessons in law enforcement. Um, we have uh, we have all the empirical data we need to know what works and what doesn't work, what keeps us safer, and what puts us at risk. And uh, in Washington right now, whether it is disregarding the empirical evidence about criminal justice policy and policy on guns, or disregarding the science on climate change, uh, uh, we have a Congress that just is refusing to work with facts. So uh, I think that it's I'm, was inspiring to see people stand up and demand a vote, but a vote on very simple things. It's just a vote to require background checks. The overwhelming majority of gun owners favor background checks. So this really is, is a problem where uh, our federal government is worse uh, than the American people deserve. It is worse than it's not doing what the American people want. And I think that there, you know, there may be some significant turnover in federal elections this fall, but uh, states like New York are working very hard to do this. We can't do it on our own. We know what's happening in New York, but guns flow up from other states on what's called the Iron Pipeline. Well documented. Everybody knows it's happening. So we do need action at the federal level. You know, the, the common uh, reply uh, from uh, gun rights uh, advocates is that the bad guys will still get guns. In, in this case, was it 100 bad guys that could have got guns, or was this a case of the same well, you don't know. You don't know. I mean, in Orlando, a bad guy got the gun because they have lax laws. So, you know, this is, uh, this is a problem all over America. And every gun starts out as a legal gun. It's not like down at the, uh, uh, the Glock factory, they say it's time to stop making the legal guns. Let's start making the illegal guns. Every gun starts as a legal gun, and then it gets sold to someone who's a bad guy or gets stolen or it gets lost. So the the trail to bad guys with guns starts with legal guns. So we have to deal with the realities of it. Um, the SAFE Act is a good law. It's been upheld and we've had a lot of challenges to it. It's working and as, ev as demonstrated by uh, the public outcry in other parts of the country where they don't have laws like this, where someone like the Orlando shooter could just go in and buy a weapon essentially identical to this one. Uh, the public is fed up with this. The public is fed up with this. And I think even a majority of gun owners uh, understand that something as simple as a background check is something we should do. I visit gun shows. We, we have reached deals with gun shows all over the states. We have the best procedures for gun shows in America. Gabby Giffords and Mark Kelly came to a gun show in Saratoga to give us a shout out because we have the best procedures for guaranteeing background checks with the cooperation of the gun show operators. I talk with them. I visit with them. I assure you there are common sense gun laws that we could all agree on. There's just this paralysis and polarization in Washington that's making it, it impossible to move forward on this issue and on quite a few other issues. But we're not seeking to take away the rights of hunters, people that have guns for self-protection. But with all due respect, you don't need an assault weapon to hunt or for self-protection. That's not what these are for. And uh, sometimes in the interest of public safety and public health, you have to put limits on what we can do. This is a good example of common sense limits. Uh, two parts. Have all the guns that were sold from the store been seized? Uh, do the owners of the store been seized? And is this the largest seizure? 
this is this is far and away the largest seizure. I think we've recovered the overwhelming majority of the weapons. We I think we're still working on a few others. I'm extremely confident in the success of our prosecution. Can you uh, go into detail at all about the severity of what they'll be charged with? Later? Well, there is uh, still other evidence being gathered when we uh, we expected when we drafted the felony complaints in this case that when we got into the homes of the three defendants, uh, we would find additional evidence. We did, and some of that's been made public. Some of it hasn't, including other assault weapons drugs. And so uh, when we go into the grand jury there, we expect there to be enhanced charges, but they're looking at, a, they're looking at a lot of time. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much.